It's actually my mm -hmm. first time ever, you know, having a conversation with the artist on this stage. Uh, I'm very new to this organization, and uh, it's so honored to be here with uh, Hiroshi Sugimoto, the artist I've admired, followed for mm -hmm. last 25 years. Oh. <laughs> yes, uh, since your exhibitions have actually, uh, you know, wax uh, figure portraits actually in uh, Sagamachi uh, exhibition Sagacho. space. Yes, yes. Uh, I think around 2000 perhaps. Yes. So we also speak, we have a conversation often, mm -hmm. but always in Japanese. So <laughs> I wonder how that would translate into English language. So uh, I'm very excited about this well, yeah. conversation. Uh, it'll be one hour long conversation, and then mm. we will open up to the floor uh, to have your question, your reflections for maybe 15 to 20 minutes. We want to end this program by uh, 8 o'clock. So that's the roadmap mm -hmm. for uh, tonight's program. Mm -hmm. so, well, we have so many issues to discuss, but I wonder whether we can finish it within one hour or not. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, we try to keep the question and answer time at the end. Okay. Yes. But I've known you for a quarter of the century. Yes. And uh, I've known you as a kind of scholar of photography, contemporary photography. And then you went to uh, well, Houston Museum as a curator. Yes. And then you moved to Hayward. Uh, not, not the Hayward. No. <laughs> Tate Modern. Tate Modern, yes. <laughs> Tate Modern. I was amazed. Wow. <laughs> this is uh, the, one of the best museums in the world. And well, then recently you came back as a museum director. That shocked me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was shocking to me as well. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so, you know, we talked about London. So mm -hmm. uh, I was actually back in London uh, over Thanksgiving. Yes. And came back yesterday, as a matter of fact. But I saw your uh, beautiful just mm -hmm. fascinating exhibition, mm -hmm. your, uh, a survey exhibition. It's your what? biggest survey mm -hmm. show yes. uh, uh, up to uh, the present day. Yeah, well, because of the COVID, uh, it's been postponed for like three years. And yes. finally, I was I'm able to open this. Uh, this is, uh, yeah, I, I'm satisfied by myself. It's very hard to convince me. <laughs> but <laughs> I convinced myself. <laughs> it's more than 100 photographs and, and mm -hmm. two sculptures, and mm -hmm. I think one video. Uh, it really you know, covers his 50-year career uh, in this yes. exhibition. So before mm -hmm. we start conversation, mm -hmm. we would like to show you actually remarks mm -hmm. made by uh, Ralph uh, Rogoff, the fantastic director of Hayward, who curated this exhibition. Mm -hmm. So uh, please have a light down, please. I just want to welcome everybody and thank you for joining us for this night, which we've been waiting for for a very long time. I first got in touch with Hiroshi Sugimoto back in 2017, and the pandemic delayed this show. So it's with enormous pleasure that we're opening the show tonight of this truly extraordinary artist. Hiroshi Sugimoto has explored the possibilities of photography and reflected on its history with a deep insightfulness and a thrilling invent inventiveness that is unmatched, I think, by any artist of his generation. His pictures don't simply document his chosen subjects. They seem to invest them with a host of unrealized but alternative possible meanings. And his work draws on a really wide range of references, not just the history of photography, but as you see in this room, it engages in conversations with chapters from the history of painting and the science of optics. Elsewhere with architecture and mathematics, he's someone who's really taken photography out of its cubbyhole and shown that this is a medium with which you can use to explore the fundamental questions about how we experience the world. All great arts, his work also spans contradictory positions. He has been a maverick innovator, but he's also a traditionalist. You know, his work is really made with this exacting craftsmanship 
Um, and at the same time, he's a postmodern poet of paradox who will play all kinds of games with your mind as you're looking at his pictures. These pictures are also arrestingly elegant and they brim with a kind of minimalist beauty. Yet at the same time, they're conceptually driven. The Russian really begins with ideas, and these works are reflections of his own thoughts. They can be pointedly ambiguous, and they're also playfully, sometimes even subversively clever. And to me, they're very much a tonic for our perpetually distracted minds. You know, they pull us into encounters that are so concentrated they enhance our sense of seeing itself as a creative activity that takes time and patience to unfold. And in doing this, and helping us see familiar things in completely different ways, because I think your subjects have always been things we all know, see dioramas, movie theaters, but you present them in ways that transform them. And that work sets us on a voyage of discovery. And to me, this is the most magical gift that art gives us. It can, and this is what I think Hiroshi's work does, is it takes our mental landscape and opens it to encompass new horizons. In the dark rooms of our mind, it opens up new windows. This is a really ambitious exhibition. It's got over 100 photographs in it, two wonderful sculptural models, and a video, which if you haven't seen, is played in the Dangram Pavilion. Um, but most of all, our infinite thanks and our enormous respect goes to the artist. So I hope you can join me in thanking Hiroshi Sugimoto for this astonishing exhibition and for all his truly singular, inspiring, and serenely mind-blowing art that he has made over the last 50 years. So thank you. I think uh, this was one of the best speech ever <laughs> received. <laughs> you know, usually, usually museum directors' speech is boring. Okay. <laughs> but this is very well done and quite intelligently explained my art, and even without any note. Right. I, I was fascinated. Yes. Yes. Yes, I could, I could tell. Uh, the title is uh, Time Machine. Time Machine. Why did you title that? Uh, it's a kind of a weird title, but uh, I consider my camera as a time machine. Through the photography, I can trace back the memories of human beings. So, uh, well, it's a recording device of time. So, I just negatively using this. Uh, function of the camera to bring back my memory or the human consciousness. Yes. Why we only human being gain the consciousness? Why we have a mind? What's mm. the difference from the animal state to a human state? That's only happened to maybe well, about 10,000 years ago or 200,000 years ago. It's not that long time. So I want to study what the human Mm. Where, where human came from, why we became human. That through using my uh, photographic technique, I can play back to bring up, back our memory to the origin. That, that's the meaning of the time machine as a camera. I mean, your work, um, it's, not, it's not documenting anything. Rather, mm. I think it creates- It's documenting of my Dark room of my mind. Yes. He said. <laughs> also, kind of, kind of, kind of, you know, in the inner reality. Yes. You know, there's always kind of tension between, I think, what you see and also what camera sees. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also kind of part left for imagination, mm -hmm. you know, on yes. the mind of viewer. Uh, so, the starting with actually diorama mm -hmm. uh, pictures. Right. The first image in exhibition is actually a polar bear, right. correct? It was uh, 1976, the yes. first uh, piece I photographed it's almost 50 bear. years ago. Polar bear looking at the fresh killed... Uh, uh, being killed. Yes, <clears throat> yes. Uh, and then with a the background of kind of you know, frozen, broken uh, ice. 
Yes. So it's an old painted background. Right. So it's, a, it's, it's a fake, it's a dead animal. Yes. But uh, I, I closed my one eye and then erased the, the uh, background. Like, uh, and then all of a sudden, uh, it looked real to me. So I decided to make my kind of fun, fantasy mm -hmm. to make it happen. If I can look the dead animals live, back then, to living, yes. then I can bring the dead back to life. Yes. That's through my camera. Yeah. So, well, and also I realized that the, the scale, mm -hmm. dimension yes. of your work, mm -hmm. uh, set in a quite large, yes. you did not show the smaller, like mm -hmm. 8 by you know, 10. It went the camera and the wide angle lens. Right. And, well, four of us killing the seal. I shouldn't be there, only like a three, four feet away. Mm. So it's, a, it's an all impossible session, something weird, but something that's real. So the large scale you know, image definitely kind of, kind of bring us into mm -hmm. the, the scene. You know, I felt as if I were walking you know, in, a, in a hallway of mm -hmm. a natural history museum right. where you photograph the polar yes. bear. Uh, there's a lot of great works, you know, one after another in this show. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, architecture of Hayward Gallery, that's mm -hmm. actually, you know, late 60s, uh, brutalist architecture. The brutalism before postmodern. Yes. So it's a concrete box. It's kind of sad, gray, dark, um, <laughs> interested, right. uh, interesting space. It's very kind of, you know, unhuman space, mm -hmm. isn't it? There's a mm -hmm. no sense of like a light or the softness in this space. Mm -hmm. But you, you brought but my, in... My task was to make it look nice. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I must say this installation of the theater mm -hmm. series was amazing. Because, you know, the, you see uh, centrality of each image is a uh, 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 theater, uh, you know, projected area, right? Mm -hmm. Screen. Yeah. And then you open up uh, the aperture of your camera to the length of the film. Yes, yes. So that's the only light source on each, <clears throat> every image you're looking at. Mm -hmm. But there's a beautiful lighting. You give a beautiful ah, light to the, museum, the right. screen. Yes. 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 So it's almost like a picture looked like a backlit or light box. Yes. Uh, this is a, one of the really amazing parts of the exhibition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this particular room, there's a top, top floor, and then they beautifully renovated this, this space. So, we, so I decided not to use any artificial light. So this is only lit by the natural light, except after the sunset, they have to turn the, the lights on. But during the daytime, it's filled with very soft, nice, it's a, but, but there's a, four rows, four, so as many uh, skylight with a triangle, the shape top, and it's just so nice and soft. And that this series, the recent series is optics, it's called. Right, yes. I am photographing the, the light itself with a Polaroid camera. Yes, large, actually, the yeah. quite old Polaroid camera. No, it's an SX-70. Okay. It's the original one which uh, I was given but this started many, many years ago. Right. But uh, you know, usually a photographer uh, is photographing something, uh, the object with a shape. But in my case, I skipped the, the shape and just directly photographing the colors, mm. which I was able to, to re-experience the 1704 Isaac Newton study yes. of the, the light with a prism. I created my own prism in, in my top floor of my Tokyo apartment and then started to, to experience the same, same experience. So work comes out as a you know, regular size Polaroid picture first. Yes. And then it's a scanned right. and then now the, the, uh, I can print it digitally. This is a new digital As a uh, chromogenic technology. print? Yes. Okay. So it's a translation from Polaroid image to mm -hmm. uh, a chromogenic print yes. here. And you made so it large. In, in, in all entire process, I am not using any artificial light. So right. the photograph was taken just directly from the, the separated, the, the colors from the prism. 
and being shown under the natural light. Yes. So it's, it's just perfect. When the Ralph, Ralph Rogoff yeah. said to you, oh, yes. you are traditionalist. Traditional At the same action. time, yes. you're also postmodernist. Post -modern. yes. <laughs> so I think this one seems to me, though, I mean, it's about color. Mm -hmm. It's about actually kind of form and shape. And it's rather sort of a traditional formalist pursuit mm -hmm. uh, in your practice uh, to me, but, you know, backed up by the incredible level of, uh, uh, you know, techniques and also knowledge of yes. how you, you know, intervene into this kind of history of photography. Mm -hmm. Uh, in this body of work, well, it's a beautiful before, work. Before I'm an artist, I, I'm more like a craftsman. Yes. It's more important than being an artist, I think. Yes. I mean, every single work you've created, I mean, there's a, you know, highest quality, mm -hmm. you know, as a, as a, as a photography. Mm -hmm. uh, the incredible depths uh, and also the tonality in every, mm -hmm. uh, every image I've seen. By you. Mm -hmm. So there's some beautiful works in here too. And I love this actually Sea of Buddha. Sea of Buddha, yes. Uh, the famous uh, Kyoto's 12th century established. Uh, yes. One third and one Buddhas. Probably many people have been seen there. But uh, uh, this was uh, 1995 for my first museum exhibition at the Metropolitan Museum. I asked. I've been asking the permission to do this for seven years before <laughs> 1995. Right. Finally, I, I was able to get the permission. Uh, I asked Philip Montevero, that time the museum director, sure. ask very nice reader for the chief abbot, and please, Sugimoto is being presented by Metropolitan Museum, please give him a chance to photograph. And then they said, no. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> All the American comes to see us. We don't go out to show us. That was a right answer. So, so, I, I amazed. Wow, this is yeah. makes sense. <laughs> so it's actually. I'm sure you have many of you have been to Sanju Sangendo. That's mm -hmm. located in Kyoto. It's actually building uh, built in 1162. It's a uh, yeah original one that is burned once and then rebuilt in the 13th century. I, think. I see. Yes. There are actually 1,001 one Buddha. Buddhas all, uh, of Kannon. Uh, all human size except the one center big yes. Buddha. And this was, yes, I was young and go, so, so go up and down 100 times a day. <laughs> <laughs> so you set it up actually quite high. Quite high. You carried on your... Uh, My your, assistant, I had, uh, like, he had a height scare. I see. <laughs> he couldn't go up. <laughs> And then the process all the film in the hotel bathroom, and then come back the next day and readjust it. It was amazing. And then, but uh, this is all uh, what I asked to the temple. Finally, I get permission. But uh, the tourists, the, the visitors, they all see it under the fluorescent light. Mm. And I discovered the best moment is only like 30 minutes early in the morning. The sun comes up from the east of the East Mountain and hit the Shoji screen in front of 1001 Buddhas. And then all the gold leaf shines. Ah. And I, I think about the, the original uh, designer or architect of this building, and this must be the best moment that the uh, motivation to, to design this. Uh, one thousand one Buddha is to see it in this particular moment. I insisted to the the the, the chief about and, and but they they are not so convinced. But uh, I wanted to see it by myself, so I I rented out every day for two weeks mm. before the the public opened like eight thirty. I came here uh, like five o'clock ready for shooting, and the sun comes up, shines. So, so only, you can only see it in my <laughs> yes. uh, uh, art, yes. not on the actual side. <laughs> as, as an image maker, mm -hmm. you really need to know, you know how light you mm -hmm. know, works onto the object you're photographing. Yes. So you need to be there you know, throughout the day just to figure out when is the best time to photograph, mm -hmm. uh, and also height of camera, yes. you turn off all the fluorescent lights, 
it's a it's a lot of work uh, uh, behind uh, this uh, yes. <laughs> incredible body of work. So actual shooting, I can be able to shoot maybe twelve shot, but uh, no, I don't see the camera. Let's just set it before the day before, and then focus already. So mm. I just go up and uh, fit the, the the film and shoot and move by the the rail on the floor. So actually, no finder. In a mm. way, actually, this installation actually you know creates space where the visitor is immersed mm -hmm. in this kind of environment of one thousand one uh, Buddha and the natural light and, and also. Same as uh, the optics, it's lit by natural light. So it's, right. yeah, it's, it's actually better than being For me, there. <laughs> I think this was uh, perhaps the you know, best uh, install uh, mm -hmm. in exhibitions. Mm -hmm. So let's just kind of move on to mm -hmm. uh, hear more. So here is a uh, diorama Dioramas, pictures yes. from your early part. Uh, then mm -hmm. theater again. Mm -hmm. Driving theater. Driving theater mm -hmm. series. And the portrait. Then portraits. Yeah. Yes. yes, this is uh, the famous London's Madame Tussle. Uh, yes, it's all, they are all photographed. So this is something like a wax figures is a kind of pre-photography invention, like uh, the, the tools to make, make, make a real the things. So I see. It's uh, very curious to me. Yeah, I mean, they look so real. I mean, it's a wonderful to see those, you know, you know, Queen Elizabeth and uh, mm. other, you know, uh, British actually figures in here. Yeah, Queen Elizabeth too was the only survived person, but now she's gone. So yes, all my collections are dead yes. people. Uh, <laughs> and also, what's interesting is though, mm. uh, Hayward has a two floors, you know, indoor. Mm. And then there's actually a little staircase to go downstairs mm -hmm. where they don't show art usually. Yeah, this is a staircase to a museum curatorial office. Yes. Yes, including the directors. But you chose to show some difficult pictures. Uh, this is a, a chamber of horrors. Yes. Which uh, they, they are not showing them uh, because of polit political correctness or some, some reasons for... But when I was sh shooting this in 1995, yes, this was the most uh, popular yeah. uh, chambers of horrors. So it's, it's a, you know, like a, you know, chamber, well, basically the, uh, not mm. execution, but also tortures and some, you know, tortures, kind yes. of horrible uh, uh, <laughs> images. I think, you know, I mean, they once were shown in, um, you know, Madame Tussauds uh, pavilion mm. in London. But the, the Ralph, Rogoff decided mm. to show them, nonetheless. Yeah, this is appropriate space. But to, in the basement, to get into the museum director's office, yes. and nice to show. So if you go to Hayward, please do not miss this uh, small installation. Mm -hmm. And then we have a, a mathematical, mathematical forms. Forms, right? Right. Those are pictures of the 19th century. The 19th century studied studies of mathematics. Mathematical formulas. Trigonometric function is called. Yes. And together with actually a sculpture piece as well uh, in front. Really beautiful installation. And, and the architecture. Architecture series. Yes. Here is your kind of... Yes. And Go ahead. Yes. That large format 8 by 10, but yeah. intentionally out of focus. Mm. So uh, I set up the focal point at the twice as infinity point, beyond the, the infinity. So there's no such uh, place in the world. But in my large format camera, I can pass the infinity, which means uh, I can shorten the barrels, it's called. So 300 millimeter lenses means 300 millimeter between lens and film. That's focused on the infinity. But I can make it 150 centimeter barrels. Then technically or logically, it must be a twice as the infinity point. Mm. So it's, it's a kind of concept, conceptual. Yes. And make it out of focus. So I'm trying, going back the time again to capture the kind of ideal image of the architect's right. mind when he built the actual building. It's more like a dream, dreamy stage of the, uh, the visions, more, more beautiful visions than actually finished product of the building. 
that's where actually I think you know you are kind of you know postmodernist uh, ah, yes. uh, you know the impulse mm -hmm. comes in because mm -hmm. you know you're in a way destroying this kind of clear you know mm -hmm. modernist language of architecture mm -hmm. by blurring images yes. intentionally. Uh, mm -hmm. But also it's great to see you know you know these pictures in this particular scale. Mm -hmm. Really wonderful here too. Uh, Corbusier, yes, Paragon. There's many, many famous yes. pieces. And uh, then, fortunately, I was able to picture the World Trade Center. Yes. That time, the World Trade Center wasn't considered as the good design building by some reason. Mm. <laughs> but I liked it. Minori Yamazaki. Minori Yamazaki. Uh, yeah, compared uh, to the uh, Miss Van Roe, he was. Seagram building, uh, yeah, not too far from here. Building. Yes, on Park Avenue. Well. Then, then lightning field. Yes. Yes. And so then, yeah, from here. Yes. So so, this was exhibitions, and and also, mm -hmm. um, we have a couple parts of this conversation. You know, after we went through the Hayward, mm -hmm. now we were we're going to talk about actually uh, Hiroshi's collection of pre-modern Japanese art, yes. but particularly mm -hmm. looking at the calligraphy, that's actually your you know, interest my, lies. My most recent uh, practice is my yes. calligraphy in a dark room. Yes. So, so I want to ask you a question, mm -hmm. first question. After you finished your art school education at the Art Center yes. in Los Angeles, you moved to New York. Yes. And then soon, mm -hmm. you began your antique started, store. No, I actually started my artistic career and shoot uh, the diorama series. Right. And then I took my portfolio to uh, Museum of Modern Art. <clears throat> and then John Shakovsky was a museum curator at the photography department, a curator. And they used to have a drop, drop the portfolio. Every Thursday. Every Thursday. Yes. I don't know whether they still have it or not. And I was told, well, we will see it, but we, we never ever make a comment. You just come back and pick up one week later. So I, so I went back with the jeans and t-shirts, and then the, the receptionist said, well, Mr. Shakaski wants to see you. I was so shocked and amazed and scared. You know? mm. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not ready to see this emperor of photography that time he, he got caught. And then I was invited to his office and he said, well, your work is interesting. We decided to buy it. How uh, much is it? So this is the first purchase. Really? Which one was that? Huh? Uh, uh, the polar the, bear. Okay, and, diorama uh, pictures. Uh, yes, high and a jackal voucher. Okay. Three, three pieces. I said, oh, I ne never sold my art, so please price me, price, price it. Yeah. He said, well, you're young, so how about $500 each? My Great rent price. was $125 a month. Yeah. Yes. So, but uh, I want to make it short, but secretary, kind of weird, uh, mean-looking secretary said, I have a paper, I want you to sign here, and I put the price in it. But she whispered me, Usually, museum get fifty percent discount. <laughs> <laughs> then I know the the nature of this, uh, right. this society. <laughs> so you only get two fifty. Yeah, in, in I, I, I have to put two fifty. Oh. So seven hundred fifty dollars total. Oh, that's so I started uh, it's a nice starting point. Right. But uh, it's hard to to pay my rent. So sure. my wife worried about it, and he start, she wanted to start uh, the antique shop. Because she used to work for the Shiseido company in Tokyo as, as, uh, um, as a kind of curator. You know, big cosmetic company, yes. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, Stylist and curator. Uh, so Ginza. she knows all the connection to the Japanese right. uh, art, art world. So I, I, I had no intention to be an antique dealer, but the but uh, the baby was born, and she has to take care of the, the mm. <laughs> Akambo. So baby. I was forced to go, go to buy with, with her least where to buy. And then that's just, just how, that's how it started.